Hey everybody, this is Try Dying to Live with another KSP video. This is my very first video since version point 13 came out. And I was so excited to show you all sorts of cool builds that I had come up with using the new fuel lines um, that were just added to the game. Except that they really aren't that great. I'm, I'm kind of disappointed. Um, for example, let me uh, open up my cool fuel line ship. This ship right here is, you know, a good example of what you might use with fuel lines. Uh, these three tanks strain into this um, center tank here, and then when they're empty, you drop them off, and uh, you get four tanks of fuel, but later on, you don't have four tanks of weight. Um, but the problem is, that ship has the same uh, performance as this ship here where you just stick all four tanks in a stack um, just due to various things the one will bur may maybe burn longer or, or add act differently uh, but in reality the two ships can do pretty much the exact same thing um, so they're kind of neat uh, but in reality they actually don't do much it's kind of a shame but that's okay because I still think they're pretty cool and I think you can make some pretty cool ships with them and I'm going to show you a neat design that you can do um, kind of inspired by real rockets uh, some of the Atlas rockets um, and, and so uh, we're gonna we're gonna learn how to make a really cool rocket build using uh, these new fuel lines here so we're gonna start off with uh, kind of how we normally start our ships off so that we can return home uh, we got uh, our advanced SAS and we're going to stack once one two three four of these tanks together we're going to use a liquid fuel engine or the uh, vectoring engine I should say um, this just gives us is going to give us lots of stability um, especially coupled with this advanced SAS then we're going to grab uh, a radial decoupler and we're just going to stick it on this uh, top tank here now we gotta watch out here because this is gonna be important is we want to put this as low as possible on this and that's not really because we need it as low as possible but it's gonna give us um, a nice measurement for something coming up so we're gonna put one two three and four tanks on here again and we're gonna use the stronger engine um, that way we get the uh, we, it, we don't need the control because the center engine is gonna have it um, and uh, we get the power off the off takeoff and we're going to tie all these stacks uh, to the center. We're not going to tie them to each other yet. Uh, we'll do that in a second. And we're going to use our external fuel duct, fuel line if you would. Um, and we're going to tie this top tank all the way to this bottom tank here. Uh, try to get it kind of inside. Make sure that it's hooked on properly. Alright, looks good. And what's going to happen is these external tanks here, um, as all the rockets burn together, uh, these tanks aren't going to be drained until these tanks are drained. Um, and so that's going to basically mean we're going to be able to drop these off and save on the weight of empty tanks. Um, unfortunately, empty tanks don't weigh that much. Um, and so in the grand scheme of things, you your burn uh, lasts longer but because it's not as potent um, it doesn't actually help you much um, so like I said it's a cool build it doesn't actually improve your 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 uh, um, the way your ship works you can actually build this exact same rocket without all the fancy things and it'll work exactly the same uh, but you know what this is kinda cool so let's get uh, another set here just because we can um, and we're going to make sure that these are totally even. Again, we're going to grab this and we're going to put it as low as we can. That's the reason why we had to put it as low as possible for just to keep it all uh, lined up. Now let's grab... Oop. This new version also makes it a little harder to uh, sometimes get your fuel tanks on there. Man, now I'm really having trouble. There we go. One, two, and three, and four. All right, let's get this tied off so that our, our engines don't make our ship wobbly. Nobody likes a wobbly rocket. And we're going to do one more cool thing, which is we're going to take this and we're going to attach this top part 
all the way to this bottom part here. So the way the fuel is going to flow is these tanks won't empty, or I should say, the center tank won't empty until these three tanks won't em until these three tanks are empty, and these three tanks won't empty until these three tanks are empty. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our engines, so all of our engines at the fire at the same time, and we're going to separate these out so we can lose our first uh, set of three. Uh, tanks and engines together and then we'll drop the other set, set later and we'll continue on it every time we drop a set our our rocket will be totally full of fuel um, so let's take you to the launch pad and try it out all right here we are on the launch pad the ship is nice and stable um, sometimes if your ship will will fall over or the the bottoms will break and the reason why that is is because you didn't get your stacks uh, even enough and so you'll have to go back in and fix that. Um, but this, this worked out well. Um, so we're going to turn the SAS on, throttle up, and launch. Now you'll notice that we're even though we're burning seven engines, we're only pulling from three stacks. And those three stacks are, uh, are, are dropping uh, very quickly. And that's because we're only pulling out of those three tanks for the whole engine. We're saving the rest of our fuel, or, or I should say not pulling from the rest of our tanks, um, because we're saving them for, for more higher up. Uh, you might notice that your, your engines start to overheat a little bit. They won't explode. It won't be an issue. Uh, but we'll continue on. Um, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video for right now. And I'll bring it back uh, just in time for us to drop off our, the rest of our stacks. Alright, we have burned 9 tanks. Uh, of course, 12 tanks and 4 stacks. 3 times 4 is 12. So uh, when we burn our 12, fourth, or our 12 stack, um, We'll drop these off. Those three engines will actually stop firing. Um, so it's actually dead weight and they'll just drop right off there. And we got rid of them. Um, and so now this rocket is totally full again. Um, and we're burning off these outer uh, stacks. So the fuel in these outer stacks. Um, the weight of the rockets kind of slowed us down. There's a lot of extra little parts um, that you have to add in because of... Um, the fuel lines and, and the various things um, and we've actually just cut our power right now if we were running full blast um, we'd actually almost be done with our rocket by now our burn by now but our burn is a bit slower um, and we just we're just going to keep going on I, t I take that back we wouldn't be done with our burn we'd be half done with our burn um, but we, we'll keep on burning um, as we get to uh, oh yeah, that's about good enough we're go, we'll go ahead and we'll start doing our, our orbit. This rocket is actually uh, powerful enough that if you go to the ultimate moon landing video, um, the top part with the fins, um, you could actually literally sit that on top of this rocket and it would be able to take your sh that, that top part all the way to the moon so you could land it on the moon, um, which would be a really cool thing. Um, and I've actually done that with this rocket. I want to make sure that it could be done. This is sort of probably going to be my new de facto rocket. It's very stable, very good to use. The only downside to this rocket is this, uh, for moon landing, is this, because it's so large and there's only one rocket engine, your deceleration as you're trying to slow down as you get close uh, to the moon, uh, you have to do it a lot sooner because you don't have that, that, that power um, to slow yourself down, you don't have those three engines to slow yourself down, so it takes a lot, lot longer to do that. Um, but other than that, it works great. You have more than enough fuel than you need. It's really stable. Um, the other one is very stable too, but this one is even more stable. Um, and I, I think it's a really great design. Um, and so I'm probably going to be using it a lot more in the future. You're going to see different things. Um, one thing that I'm going to, a video I'm going to do in the future is actually probably going to be, um, I've actually done this off camera, um, but I'm probably going to do a, a tutorial video on how to do, um, how to put a, a satellite around, in orbit around the MUN. Um, and so that's going to be a fun one. I'll use this rocket to do it because it's so effective. Um, but we're coming up and we're finishing off our last stacks, our last uh, fuel tanks. And you'll notice that, um, <coughs> excuse me, that we're not using fuel as fast now and that's because um, we're not having twice as many engines running on on the same amount of tanks um, but we they're going to use them a little faster just because of this one but it's a long long burn time um, right now we're actually continuing on and uh, another great new feature here is that 
you get to watch everything go on out. Um, we're actually going to go for an escape. Um, and there it is. We've escaped. We're going to throttle down. Um, we actually used up all of our fuel right there. And we just... Uh, now this one is full and these are not full anymore, so we'll get rid of them. Goodbye guys. Oop. Accelerate away from them so they don't crush anything. Uh, one fun fact is if you release your tanks while they still have fuel in them, um, they'll actually fly off in front and then do a circle and then smash into each other just as you pass through it. It's really cool. Uh, but we're not doing that right now because we, we've got another mission. We're on an escape mission. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to get out of here. <clears throat> and we're going we're gonna to go investigate the solar system. Uh, one new cool feature that they added in the game is the ability to control your throttle um, from, from this view, which is nice, but it's important to note that you can only control your throttle when this uh, the nav ball is up. If the nav ball is down, you have no control over your ship. And I really wish um, that they you could control your ship um, like the, the direction of your ship from this right here, but you, you can't, so that's kind of a disappointment. But, you know, because I, I think it'd be a cool video to, like, actually, like, fly to the moon and land on the moon and totally in this view here. I think that'd be pretty awesome. But anyways, right, so we're continuing on, uh, traveling at, there we go, travel at max speed, and we are saying goodbye uh, to the planet we once knew. Where did it go? It kind of disappears all of a sudden. Let's see here. It's actually um, over here somewhere, maybe? It's hard to tell. It just disappears, and you can't find it anymore. It's a little tiny speck with a, with a moon. There it is. Oh, is that it? Oh, it's so hard. I always think it's stars. But anyways, uh, that's not important. What is important is that we are actually now orbiting the sun, um, but that's not enough for me. I don't want to merely orbit the sun, no. I want to escape the solar system. So let's do that. Let's get out of here. All right, I'm going to turn on my engine ever so slightly just because uh, with this um, um, vectoring engine, if you give yourself some power, it gives you more control over your ship. Um, and so we'll actually start powering ourselves up and lock it in there. And we'll see if we can't get ourselves um, escaping. We've got a lot of speed to go. Um, you can see our apoapsis is barely raising up, um, but we'll give ourselves a few minutes. Um, I'm going to go off camera, let ourselves get some uh, speed built up, and I'll come back. All right, everybody, coming on back here. We're on our last tank of fuel. Long, long burn. Uh, there's about four minutes of uh, burn time on this last stack here, and looks like we just made it. And so now we are actually on an escape trajectory from the solar system. And if you follow this on out, the sun actually becomes a little tiny dot. It actually shrinks down. Um, it's really kind of cool looking. <clears throat> Let's actually go ahead and do that and zoom, zoom our speed ahead and so you can kind of see how the... Uh, the Earth kind of, or the Sun, I should say, gets small. You can't even see uh, the planet Kerbin anymore. Sorry, my cat was uh, being naughty. Had to get some snaps before I got some spankings, but it got got going before spankings. Uh, but anyways, um, so here's some of the things in the new update. And uh, there's a nice build for you guys. There's a neat tutorial for you guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope you learned something. Now if you're one of those people that think that the new external fuel tanks and the fuel lines are good because it means that solid boosters aren't really necessary anymore, you are wrong because solid boosters are necessary because they can do something that liquid boosters cannot and that's get your ship up to a high speed very quickly. And besides, they're not mutually exclusive, you can have them both. So, the fuel lines still don't add that much to the game. At least, don't make your rockets any better. Nah. <laughs>